Hello everyone and welcome to a really fun video. Today I'm going to show you how I made all those gorgeous three-dimensional flowers which are perfect for embellishing your craft projects but also for decorating gift bags, gift boxes or even your craft room. A couple of weeks ago I shared here on my channel an unboxing video where I opened up a box from Dress My Craft and there were lots of supplies for flower making and in those comments everyone asked for a 3D flower video so let's have some fun playing with flowers today. First of all you are going to need this specialty paper it's called Floral Oriental Collection this is premium white cardstock and the fun part is that when you soak it in water and it dries it makes rock hard flowers which is perfect for three dimensional flowers since they are going to stay nice and fluffy just the way you made them in the beginning. Another advantage of this paper is that no matter how much you manipulate it doesn't tear that easily. You will see what I mean in the video. So you can find this cardstock in two different um, thicknesses. So the soft one is 120 GSM while the harder one is 285 GSM. But no matter which one you choose to go with, the technique is exactly the same. So first of all, you need some dies to cut out the petals. There are smaller and bigger sets, depending on your budget. You will find all kinds of different flowers. I will leave a link down below. You will find pointy ones like daisies or some five petals, six petals, huge ones like this one. There is something for everyone. And in this video I'm going to show you that just by using one set you can have different looking flowers. So this is the flower number 3 set. It gives you only 3 dies but the result is just stunning. So first I'm going to do my die cutting. I'm using the heavy flower oriental collection cardstock and I'm going to use the dies to cut out every shape once. You have to do a lot of die cutting, you can use a bigger machine, I just wanted to show you that it fits in a smaller mini die cutting machine. Now since this is white cardstock, I'm going to add a little bit of color. For that I choose to go with archival ink. This is quite important to use a permanent ink since I'm going to dip those flowers later on in water. And if you use for example um, distress oxides or... Um, watercolor to add color to those flowers it is going to dilute when you dip them in color so just keep that in mind you can definitely swipe your uh, ink pad over those flowers to color them quickly or even use a bigger brush to uh, blend color on top of them however i decided to add for this design only color at the centers so that's why i'm using a very small blending brush so that i can control exactly where i add the color don't worry if the center looks quite splotchy, this is not going to show at the end since you're going to layer one on top of the other and that's where the glue is going to go. Now I'm going to bring in a bowl of water and I'm just going to dip them there for a few seconds. The water will soften the fibers of that paper and it will allow me to manipulate the petals to give them shape without having cracks on the cardstock or tearing. You will need a soft surface to work on, the back of your mouse pad is perfect for that and you will also need some tools. Now these are really unique tools, you won't find them anywhere else in the market. These are called Groove Golf Tools, you get four of them in one set and they have some grooves at the bottom allowing you to add shape on one side and the other side is pointy. And here are some close-up photos where you can see exactly how that tool looks like at the bottom. After a few seconds remove the flowers, now they are nicely soaked, place them on top of a paper towel and wipe them lightly. Now pick up one flower, turn it upside down and use the groove tool to go over the petals. I'm not pressing too hard. I'm going lightly from the tip of the petal towards the center. Remember in the set of those tools you get four of them in different sizes so you can pick any one you like and you can do as many swipes as you like. Like here for example I do three of them using your different sizes of uh, those groove tools as well as how many swipes you do per petal will give you a variation of looks. 
So here I'm just using a ball tool to press at the center and I have the first layer ready. I'm going to repeat the same process with the other layers and maybe I can switch to another tool. So here I'm going to use a smaller one, but again I'm going to do three swipes. Again I'm working at the back. I'm going to make lots and lots of variations of these flowers today on this video, so you will see that depending on which side of the flower you are working on, you can get a completely different look. And of course I will repeat the same process for the last layer, here they are all together. Now I'm going to use my heat gun and make sure that this is completely dry. These flowers will end up rock solid when they dry. I have found that when the flowers are completely dry, it is easier to shape them when you use the ball tool at the center. So I'm going to give them a good press at the center one more time. And now let's make some holes at the centers. I'm using the pointy tip of that tool on all three of them. And then it's just a matter of putting the layers together. For this example, I'm using white glue. As I'm sticking the layers one on top of the other, I'm making sure that as I overlap, I don't overlap the petals. So they are offset and this way they are going to give a fluffier look. I like to hold them down with my ball tool for a few seconds until they stick together nicely. It already looks stunning and you can build up even more layers if you want to make it fluffier. For example, you could have two layers from each size. And now let's talk about the center. For the center of the flower there is a variety of options and I'm going to show you many of them today for a completely different look. Changing the centers will change the look and feel of your flower. So you can get stamens like these ones in different variations, bigger, smaller, with a glitter on top. I will leave a link down below where you can find tons of them. But you do get the option to use those styrofoam buds. These are also really lovely. You get them in two different sizes and provide an amazing way to embellish your flowers. Really unique. Also keep in mind that you get 20 of those styrofoam buds in one pack for less than $2. So they are really inexpensive. You will have lots of fun playing with them. And in this video I'm going to show you four different ways on how to use them. I'm going to make lots of flowers, so if you want you can stop the video now, go grab a cup of coffee or tea, whatever you prefer, and keep on watching. Now one way to use those styrofoam buds is to cover them up with beads. There are different sizes, micro beads or those pearl ones that you can use. All I do is to just cover that bud with uh, glue. I just use white glue, it works just fine, and then I dip them in those beads. There are different colors of them that you can choose. I go with the white ones for this example. And you will see in the close-up photo of this flower how beautiful that center looks. I'm waiting for that glue to dry and in the meantime I'm going to play with the stamens. So let's make that center super fancy. I'm going to use a bunch of them. I use a very thin wire at the middle. Just wrap it in half and bend the stamens in half again. This way I double up on them and with the help of that uh, wire I will be able to thread them through the center on my flower. One thing you need to keep in mind is when you use that point tool to create the holes at the center, always make sure that since you need to thread through all those stamens, those holes have to be a little bit larger. I'm going to remove that wire, I don't need it anymore, and at the center, let's add that bud, now the glue is completely dry. I'm just going to thread it through the center, and the result is absolutely stunning, I'm super happy with how this flower looks. Oh, and by the way, the petals are, are really rock hard, so it is very sturdy for placing it on top of your uh, projects. It's going to keep its shape. Now, one question that you may have is what we do with the bottom of the flower. One thing that you can do is to add some glue, hot glue. I'm going to do it in a bit, you will see what I mean. And then you can use your scissors and chop off the excess if you want to use it on a project. But if you want to use it for decoration for your craft room, you can always go ahead and use some uh, florist tape to wrap around that wire. And now that we are all familiar with the technique, let's make more flowers with different dyes. 
So for the next example, I'm going to work with the 8 petal daisy flower. This set comes with 5 different sizes, but you don't always have to use all the sizes for creating flowers. Just be creative to make even more from what you get. So for this example, I'm going to use only the larger of the dies, and I'm going to cut out two of those shapes, identical ones. This time I'm going with yellow for the petals and I'm coloring the bag as well, just in case you can see that at the end. For the center of the flowers I'm going to deepen up the color by adding a touch of orange. And then it's time for my flowers to take a bath. I'm going to dip them there and let them soak for a few seconds. And then just like I did for the first flower, the process is exactly the same. I will repeat the same steps. Soak them on a paper towel and shape them using the groove tools. This time the petal is very narrow, so just one swipe with the groove tool will do the trick. Again I'm working on the back of the flower, and depending on which side you choose to go with, you will end up with the curve of the petal in that direction. So now the idea here is to create kind of a cone flower, since I had those big buds, so again here I'm using my pointy tool to make a hole at the center and on a cone flower the petals have a curve towards the bottom so I think it looks already beautiful as it is. Now let's create the center. So in the previous flower I used the micro beads. In this flower I'm using flower pearls. The color is black and you will find that you get uh, a mix of sizes in here. I'm just adding some glue on a scrap piece of paper and then I'm going to cover up completely my center. My best friend in this process is my finger so I will make sure that everything is wet with glue and then I will dip it in the beads. A clever way to go is to color it black before I add the glue and dip it there so in case uh, some beads don't cover up completely the whole thing it wouldn't show at all. But you can also sprinkle some glitter in the same color, which is going to cover up any white spots. So this time I decided to go with my hot glue gun to secure the center there. And I think this is a really unique flower and it's looking just stunning. So keep in mind that you can get many variations of uh, flowers starting from the same die set. You can end up with flowers with different layers, switch up the sizes of the dies that you use, you can switch up the colors and of course the center of the flowers. For my next example I'm going to work with a daisy flower and instead of using again all the layers, I'm just going to use two of them. By the way, lately I have been using the Magic Mat by uh, Scrabbook.com. This is a self-healing mat that you use instead of one of your cutting plates and it makes a whole lot of a difference. I don't have to worry about my plates getting warped. It is really a game changer. I have used it with my Spellbinders Platinum machine. I do use it with my Sizzix Fold Away machine and it works just fine. So back to the flower, I'm going for a daisy this time, I'm going to ink up the center slightly, then they are going to take a bath for a few seconds, and just like I did with the previous flowers, I will repeat the same process. And for the daisy petals, I think I went with the smallest of the groove tools, since it's so narrow. Again for this flower, I worked at the back, and then I'm going to turn it around and use the ball tool at the center. For this flower, I'm not going to add a hole in the middle, I'm just going to stick one layer on top of the other with glue, making sure that I offset the petals. And then for the center, I'm going to cover it up completely with white glue, and then I will add some of those flower pearls. They are going to stick there, you will find that uh, you get a mix of uh, bigger and smaller beads, and if you end up having some white spots, don't forget, you can always drop a little bit of glitter there, which is going to cover up any white spots. For the next example, let's play with a 5-petal rounded flower die set. 
Again, this is a small one, you get only three sizes, but the results are always stunning. And out of those three ties, I tie cut five flowers. I just like to see what I can get if I don't go with the obvious. So here I have two of the smaller sizes, two of the mid one, and then one of the larger size. For this flower, I'm going with purple. For the two smaller shapes, I did color them front and back because it's going to show the way I'm going to put this flower together. Now for the biggest one, I'm going to do what I did with the rest of the flowers. I'm working at the back. I'm using my Groove Golf Tool and I'm adding three strokes at the back. And then use the Ball Tool at the center on the other side. I repeated the same process for the next two sizes, but for the smaller ones, I'm going to do something different this time. Keep in mind I have colored both sides on these flowers. I do add some curve on the petals with my groove tool and then I'm going to use the ball tool on the same side. This time I'm not turning it around. And here is another way to use those styrofoam buds. Instead of sticking something on top like pearls or glitter, this time I'm just going to color it in with my archival link. You can use sprays if you like, that is even quicker. And for sticking everything together for this flower, I decided to go with my glue gun. So the styrofoam is going to stay nice and sturdy at the center of the smaller flower. And I like how the petals curl up, kind of hugging that bud all around. You can stop here and you will end up with a tiny flower for your projects with a lovely bud inside. For a flower composition using the same flowers, you do need smaller and bigger ones, so this is an option. Now I'm going to build it up however and make it fluffier, so again I'm going to add another one at the bottom and keep on going. So here on the second layer you can see that I have the petals curved towards the top. And again for variation you can stop here, but I'm going to show you how it would look if you add all the petals. Now for the next three layers the petals are curved towards the bottom, so it is going to add a completely different look and feel. I know that every crafter loves using flowers on their projects and I'm no exception and creating three-dimensional flowers is so much fun. I couldn't stop once I started making these flowers and that's why this video is so long with so many different examples. And again you can see this is just stunning. And let's try this die set. This is the Create a Flower set that gives you 10 different dies. You do get different sizes for the flowers, but you also get leaves as well. So for this one I decided to go with blue and I die cut 5 different sizes. For the two smaller layers I did curve the petals towards the top, while for the rest of the layers they are curved towards the bottom. Just having the curve of the petals in a different direction will give a completely different look on your flowers. So here I'm going to use my poke tool and add some holes at the center of the flowers. I'm just <laughs> using one on top of the other. I'm going to glue them in a bit. And this time for the center I'm going to go with those pollens. I'm just going to wrap them around the wire, fold them in half and thread them through that hole. I decided to go with white ones for these blue flowers, but you can definitely mix and match colors, the variety of those pollens uh, that are provided in different colors and sizes is amazing. So you can choose your favorite, plus you can use the white ones and color them if you like, depending on your project. So here is my blue flower with the white pollens. And now using the same dyes I'm going to make even more flowers, this time smaller ones. So here I have just two layers, one curved towards the top, the other curved towards the bottom. And for the centers I'm going to go with these yellow ones. And notice that both that blue flower as well as the one that I'm putting together now are made using the same dyes. However, you end up with a completely different look.
Isn't this one lovely as well? I couldn't uh, find a flower that I didn't like putting together. They all end up looking just gorgeous. Again here using the same dies only two layers but both layers curve towards the top and for the center this time I'm going with pollen that has glitter on top. This is just stunning in real life. Always secure the back with a dot of glue. And isn't this one stunning as well? And because I couldn't stop, I had to make one more variation, this time in blue. Just one layer for all those tiny flowers and very simple ones that we need. But I'm using the smaller styrofoam available, covering it up with glue and then dip it on glitter. Just a dot at the center with my glue gun and I'm going to thread it through. Very simple, really quick and easy to put together, but always beautiful. Another thing that you can do with those styrofoam centers is to cover them up completely with the petals on the smaller layer. And this is going to give the look as if it is a bud, a flower bud. You can do this with glue, but I found that working with my glue gun was super handy for putting all those flowers together quickly. So here is a little bud for your flower compositions. But you know I couldn't stop myself with those flowers, so I just had to see how that would look if I layered many of those flowers, one on top of the other, always having the petals curved towards the top. And I think it looks like a beautiful rose. And I promise this is the last one that I'm putting together for this video, but I had so much fun playing. Down below in the description area you will find links to all the products that I used. These are all by Tress My Craft. You can find them in the US if you go to Scrabbook.com, but you can also order them for India, depending on where you live. And if you are still with me after 20 minutes of flower making, thank you so so much for sticking with me. And if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like button, it really makes a difference. And check this out, all these flowers were made using the same dyes. But they all have different centers, they do have different number of layers, different colors and of course different way of manipulating the petals, so I end up with so many different styles. So that's it for today, I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired as I was putting together all those gorgeous flowers. Thank you all so much for joining me and I hope you'll all have a lovely weekend.